Kennedy was filmed during COVID-19. Even though speakers will not be wearing masks, social distancing precautions were held with a minimum of six feet. Removing the mask is for the quality of filming. Please continue to wear your mask until COVID-19 is no longer a threat. Hello and welcome. My name is Katie Smith. I'm joined with Dr. Susan Hammonds-White, and we are going to discuss coping with the holidays after losing a child or children and how um, we can, she can discuss how to maybe have some good practices or just anything that will help you during this difficult time. Susan, how can families still find a sense of normalcy during the holiday season? Well, Katie, first of all, thank you for inviting me to do this. It's, it's a pleasure to be here, and I hope that our conversation will be useful to families um, in, this, in this difficult time. Um, you know, the question that you ask is, how can you find normalcy? I'm not sure there is any normalcy um, when you've lost a child, because everything is different. Everything has changed. and. Facing up to that is one of the hardest things that I think that, that you have to do, that what you knew as normal isn't anymore. Um, given that, there are still things that are important to do. Um, one of the most important things is just maintaining your own um, self-care. You know, making sure you eat, making sure you sleep, um, being outside a little bit. Um, but I would say maybe the most important thing to do is to be kind to yourself because you're facing a, an inner turmoil that is unlike anything else mm -hmm. um, that anyone ever experiences. The loss of a child or children, it's just not, it's not what we expect as parents. Um, so sometimes we expect too much of ourselves. Right. You know, we expect that we're going to just, and our society tells us, well, just keep going, just bounce back, just go ahead. Absolutely. And the reality is, is that doesn't work. Um, so allowing yourself to break down if you need to, to cry if you need to, to go away from everybody and just be by yourself and do what you need to do for you. Um, yeah, that is so hard to remember to do. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. And because the messages that we get from, from the world, um, you know, our world doesn't want us to, um, the, our world is uncomfortable. I wouldn't say they don't want us to. The world, most most people are uncomfortable with death, period. Absolutely. You know, um, so they want us to, my experience is they want us to hurry up, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. kind of get over it and get back to normal. Mm -hmm. And that's, there will be another way of living, but it's not, not probably the normal that you experienced before this loss. That's very good advice. Um, in that kind of same topic, what are some good ways that you think um, families can honor their, their child or their children um, during the holidays? Is it Are there certain rituals they could do or make new traditions? And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, what are your thoughts? Well, one of the things that I think is really important to do in terms of honoring a child that is that has died is speak the child's name, you know, bring the child into present moment, um, talk about the things that you remember that, that this child did that were special or funny or, or uh, darling or cute or, and also talk about the things that were hard, you know, uh, don't, don't be reluctant to face the things that were difficult. Um, so, one, one thing is bring the child in. Don't just wipe the child out of existence. Um, in 
in present time. Some people, um, depending on the age of the child, you know, the age of the loss, because we're talking about children all the way from sure. infancy all the way through, actually adults lose children, Absolutely. adult children. Mm -hmm. um, so some people like to, um, if the child was old enough, to actually set a table, set a place at the table for the person who's gone, which gives an opportunity to talk about that person. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, this was Johnny's favorite uh, plate, mm -hmm. let's say, or uh, Johnny loved this Christmas uh, crash or whatever, whatever your holiday, or the Hanukkah, the sure. menorah, whatever it is. Um, don't be afraid to, to bring in these special things. <clears throat> Another thing that people like to do is to, if there's a, a favorite animal, you know, like for a little, a little one, mm -hmm. if there was something that was their lovey, oh, you yeah. know, to, to, to bring the lovey with them into the present time. Um, some people like to uh, do some sort of, of generosity in the name of the child. Yeah, that's good. Um, that, you know, if you have the resources to create a fund or, or something of that kind, or if you don't, just find an angel tree or yeah. do something like that in the name of the child that's gone. Mm -hmm. Those are, are giving rituals that can be really helpful. Um, in terms of families, <clears throat> you know, there are other children who have, often there are other children in the family that yeah. have, and I have to have a sibling um, sometimes siblings ask questions. Mm -hmm. You know, where where is where are they gone, and what's happened to them? Um, and depending on the age of the child, you know, up until about age five, children don't have a a really good grasp on what death is. Um, you know, you can explain it, but then they say, "Well, when is he coming back? Will we see him next week?" Or, sure. um, and you kind of have to just go with that with that. Um, I found it sometimes helpful with children to read some of the some of the books that are about the death of a pet, oh, okay. um, because it's a little little sideways, but it's also a loss. And sure. there's a one that's called the Ten Ten Good Things About Barney. I think it was a, it's about a okay. about a dog that that the child lost, and that was helpful. Okay. Um, let me think of other rituals. Pictures, have a, have pictures, have pictures out. Mm -hmm. Don't put all the pictures away. Um, I know in, in our house, I still put out um, my my two boys' stockings. Yes. So, um, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess the most what I would say overall for this is that the most important thing is to bring them in, mm -hmm. bring them in to the holiday, bring them in to the Thanksgiving. Be thankful for their life. Be thankful for the things that they brought, um, for the Christmas, for the for the, the Hanukkah, for whatever your tradition is. Mm -hmm. Bring them in as part of that, because remembering them is so important for you, for the family, um, for every, for everyone. I think that that's great. Um, kind of. Um, branching out on that subject of having them involved and bringing them in and kind of what we touched on earlier about how some people are uncomfortable with death and um, don't know what to say and don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice do you have for families on how to navigate those family dinners or get-togethers, uh, maybe where you do have a place set for that child or children, and um, but how, how can they... I don't want to say help um, their other family, um, but just how to navigate those stuff. You know, right. Well, you know, I'm sure you know from personal experience, Katie, that it's um, people don't know what to say, and they say awful things sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, they say <clears throat> people say these darndest things. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I've had. I think one of the ones that's the hardest that people tell me is the um, God must have wanted another angel. Yes. It's like, oh, 
please, mm-hmm. don't put that on God. That's not right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, as hard as it is, I think that the parents can take the lead in this at a family situation and bring up the child. Mm-hmm. And maybe they need to say, this is important to us. We want to talk about the child that we lost. Um, mm-hmm. It's okay to do that. Yeah, maybe you the know. other people just need some guidance. Maybe they just need to know that, no, this is not something that, it's not morbid. Mm-hmm. It's, it's important. So we, we invite you into this opportunity to include our child. Um, because our child is still part of our family, Absolutely. even though our child is gone. Mm-hmm. So um, I always tell people who say, I don't know what to say. Well, the best thing you can say is, I'm sorry, and I'm here for you, um, and, and I love you. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to say more than that. Right, absolutely. Um, you don't have to explain or go off into any kind of religious understanding because you don't know what the other person's way of understanding sure. that world is. Mm-hmm. Um, so just presence. And I always say soft eyes. Soft eyes. Soft mm-hmm. eyes. Um, soft eyes and a soft face make a huge difference in being with people who are grieving. Sure, yeah. Body language is important. Body language <laughs> matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I do feel like some people do need guidance, and, um, and everybody grieves differently, so um, mm-hmm. what they think may work for everybody, it, right. it's really just an individual. On, you know. Right. And what, what you just said, I think, is so important because Everybody's grief experience is theirs. Mm-hmm. It's unique. You know, some people need to be surrounded with people all the time and talk about it. And some people need to be alone and sure. go off and just be with themselves for whatever time they need. Mm-hmm. And it may go back and forth. I mean, you might yeah. need <laughs> to be totally by yourself for a while and then just be surrounded. Um, Absolutely. But it's, it's your journey. It's each individual person's journey. And it's not... Um, I, I always feel distressed when I find people giving advice about um, this is the way to do it. Yeah. Because there isn't a way. There is your unique, particular way. And that's okay. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's partic- per- perfectly okay. Mm-hmm. You know, the metaphor we've talked about often, Katie, is the metaphor of, of the ocean, of the storm. Yes. You know, grief is so much a storm, mm-hmm. um, particularly in the early days. There's just a, it's waves coming at you over and over and over and over, and it feels like you'll never be free, never be out of it. Um, and But after a while, the storms do calm a bit, and they're not so frequent. The waves don't overwhelm you so often, and they, they do ebb away. Mm-hmm. But there are going to be times when they come back with a lot of force, and usually those are anniversaries yes. or holidays, uh, or sometimes just the way the the way the weather looks, right. or a smell will remind you, yeah. and that you'll feel that that upwelling mm-hmm. of the storm of grief. But it does pass yes. over time. Yeah, I think that metaphor is so important. Mm-hmm. It really does do a good job of kind of explaining mm-hmm. how the feelings can kind of come and go. And mm-hmm. um, some mm-hmm. some storms are stronger than others. Mm-hmm. Very much so. That's really good advice. What would you say, and this may be difficult to answer, but how can parents still find some joy and peace during the holidays, um, and maybe, maybe it's different levels. Maybe there's, you know, I mean, I know that that can be a hard thing to find when you're missing and just craving for that one that you lost. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is a hard question, Katie, because I think it's very, it's very individual. Mm-hmm. You know, to some degree, it depends on. 
that person's particular way of be, being able to take care of themselves. Yeah. Um, rituals, rituals help. You know, if you have a particular, let's say, I don't know if it, I don't know if this is the right the right way to do it. I'm thinking about it like if you always put up the Christmas tree, mm -hmm. um, but then you're us you're probably going to be inundated with feelings of, mm -hmm. but my my child is not here mm -hmm. to do that. Some people find that it's helpful in early grief to do something completely different. Okay. <clears throat> you know, to uh, some people even go so far as to travel. You know, we're we're going to have Christmas in a different place, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and sometimes that's helpful. Mm -hmm. I just think it's very dependent on on each person's own particular way of doing this. So maybe listening to themselves and really, like you said earlier, being kind to yourself, being true to what mm -hmm. you feel, and letting that come out, and right. just right. listening to what you need. Right. Right, because you know the the tendency might be, particularly the holidays, just to kind of try to power through. Right. You know, I'm just going to do everything by the way I always did, and um, you may end up pushing it away. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that that doesn't necessarily work for some people. Mm -hmm. um, do what's do what you feel works for you. And when we think about moments, I mean, moments of peace and joy, for me, the, the moments of peace and joy often have to do with being outdoors. You know, just it's looking powerful. just looking at the sun and knowing the sun is still there, yeah. or um, that the world goes on in spite of the fact that my child is no longer with me, um, that there's some degree of solace in that. Okay. Um, it's a mixture. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like I said, I knew that was a hard question. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I wish I had better answers on that one. <laughs> well, let's maybe go to a, a less complicated one, but if um, parents do have other children or in the household, mm -hmm. you mentioned something about a, a book earlier about uh, losing a pet, but are there other um, recommendations you have to help them um, you know, young and old, um, as you said, maybe, you know, you're not until five until you can really process um, mm -hmm. what has happened. And I know there's even, you know, teenagers that might have um, lost a sibling very close to them. Or right. um, So do you have any recommendations for how parents can help them cope? So um, when children get to be elementary age, you know, which is, you know, six, six to ten or eleven or so, um, they become very matter of fact. You know, they want details. Mm -hmm. They want specifics. Um, and sometimes their their wish for specifics is sort of startling okay. to um, to parents. Like very specific things about what happens to bodies. Okay. You know, and um, well, what does that mean? Buried, and what happens when that's happened? And. Sure. You know, of course, people have all kinds of different choices about what they do with the body. Sure. But there is a there's a book called "Will the Cat Eat My Eyeballs," <laughs> <laughs> which is um, actually something that is it's a lot of questions that children ask. Okay. That sometimes you know you need to kind of be prepared to know what to say. Okay. So that that can be um, that can be a resource. Um, Teenagers have begun to grapple with some of the bigger questions, usually. You know, what does death mean, and, and is there anything beyond, and what, how do we understand this? And depending on your traditions, if you have religious traditions, there may be answers that you can give at that point. Um, again, the most important thing is to be open to talking about it. Don't let your children sit alone and worry, you know, bring it up. How are you doing? Um, what are you thinking about right now? Um, 
how how you feel about your your sibling being gone. Don't be afraid to open the door, because I think that's probably the most important thing you can do. Is and continue if they say, well, I don't want to talk about it. Be respectful, but don't just drop it. You know, be be willing to follow up and. Um, the children need to know that it's okay. Absolutely. It's okay to have feelings. It's okay to talk about it. You know, yes, it's hard for me. It's okay for you to cry with your child. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't. you don't have to protect them from your feelings. Yeah, that's a good point. I think a lot of children, especially teenagers, probably think if they talk to their parents, they might be upsetting them. Right, so. right, exactly. And the over and over and over again, the message is, your feelings are normal. It's okay. Well, typical. Mm -hmm. I always the word normal always I trip up on a little bit. Yeah. Um, but whatever you're feeling is what you're feeling, and expressing it is really important um, as a as a role model for your for your child, your, the sibling of the child who's gone. Yeah. Because they're grieving too. Absolutely. You know. I worked with a family some, some time ago in which this is a lady who was probably in her 40s and she had lost a younger sibling when she was quite young. And her family had completely erased everything about the child. Oh gosh. Um, thinking that that was the thing to do. Mm -hmm. But the result of that was that this lady had never had the opportunity to grieve that loss. And it had a big impact on her, on her life. I mean, she was afraid of death, afraid of, you know, she had all kinds of issues as a result of that. Sure. So being able to, you're giving your children a real gift by um, being able to deal with your own grief and, and sharing some of it. I mean, that doesn't mean that you pour it all onto your child. Sure. You know, your child is not, your child's job is not to shore you up, mm -hmm. um, but it's important for you to show that, yes, the feelings are okay. That's really, really great advice. Mm -hmm. I think parents want to be strong for their children, and I think children want to be strong for their parents. Precisely. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really helpful. Yeah. I know we've... I was just thinking that one of the things that sometimes is helpful for both adults and children is to do um, writing letters. Okay. You know, to write a letter to the child that's gone um, and then share the letters to, with each other. Um, this is what I want to say, mm -hmm. but this is what I would like to say, um, and this is what I would like to say to you, my child, and this is what I'd like to say to you, my mom or my dad about how I'm feeling now. Sometimes it's a little easier to do it yes. in writing than, mm -hmm. than so directly. Yeah, I think that's a, a very good option if mm -hmm. either one is not comfortable right. um, with you know face to face. Right. So uh, that's very helpful. I know we've talked a lot about the holidays today and you've given such great information and advice. Um, I guess maybe just the last question besides anything that you've already recommended, is there anything that you really want families to remember as they go through the holiday season? Remember that it's a challenging time. Um, remember that remembering your child is a really lovely and important thing to do in the midst of this holiday season. Um, and most of all, remember that your individual way of dealing with your loss is okay. It's okay. Whatever it is that's going on for you, because your journey is your journey. <clears throat> One thing that I would add, Katie, is that um, parents often grieve differently. <clears throat> you know, men and women, stereotypically speaking, this is a pretty broad stereotype, but sure. in our society, women are given more leeway 
<clears throat> to have and express feelings mm -hmm. um, than men are. This does not mean that men don't feel extremely and profoundly, deeply about these losses, but they may not be given the opportunity to feel comfortable expressing that. Um, women, we, we tend to be okay talking face to face. Mm -hmm. um, what I've noticed is that um, sometimes my husband, for example, will be more comfortable talking about feelings when we're driving really? side by side. Huh. You know, not, not with the gaze, yes. but mm -hmm. sort of side by side. Um, so I would say to be respectful of each other's journeys, you know, and not to say, well, you, you obviously don't feel anything because you're not crying. Sure. You know, Absolutely. that's, that's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not true at all. There is a little book that I think can be helpful with the holidays. This is called The Empty Chair, mm -hmm. Handling Grief on Holidays and Special Occasions. Um, it does have some spiritual pieces to it, which if you're not spiritual, you can you can skip over. But I think it does have some really good ideas yeah. that might be a resource for, for families. That's wonderful. Thank you. And I think all of your advice is so helpful. So I really do appreciate you joining us today and discussing this very difficult topic. I'm really glad to be here, and I hope it's useful.